Yesterday, we climbed the trail Rita Cuba to a glacier in the high Colombian Andes. We're gonna try to get to another glacier above a huge alpine lake tomorrow. Yeah, we woke up there at the Cabanas and they were great to us. We were able to fill water and everything. But today... Today we're gonna have a bit of a recovery day. We're gonna be eating a ton of protein because I'm actually not too sore, but I really wanna build back that muscle and uh, get ready for the hike tomorrow. It's supposed to be even longer than yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yesterday was 12 <laughs> miles. That was a bit rough yesterday. It was a really nice payoff at the end. But that glacier we were at is peeking through the clouds a little bit up here. It's that way up there. And there's another beautiful glacier here. And yeah, later on, we're gonna head down to the next spot, which will be the start of tomorrow's hike at 6 a.m. sharp. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, hopefully we can get these legs some some recovery, because man, this is gonna be <laughs> kind of yeah, crazy. Our guide yesterday told us that the road was out up here. So we should be getting close to the part where we crossed like a sketchy wooden bridge, and then it was just this cliff that was like loose rubble that uh, just landslides all the time. So let's we'll see how this goes. Hopefully we don't have to get out the back tracks again like the other day. <laughs> okay, and this I think is actually the even sketchier part. I don't know where it lands. Like, that looks pretty fresh back there. Here's oh, some tractor geez. marks. That looks deep. Right here? Yeah. Oh, that was deep. Holy. Whoa. So we just made it to our next campsite. I'm gonna make us a snack right before we have some lunch. All right, I'm gonna make myself a protein shake with a banana and a half and two scoops of this protein powder that we got in Costa Rica. It's chocolate flavored. Usually I put oat milk or soy milk in it, but we don't actually have any left. So I'm going to just put water in it. Perfect, and it's got 20 grams of protein in it, which will help grow some muscles. <laughs> All right, I made another one for Danny. Mmm, I'm starving. This is good protein. <laughs> made a veggie roast beef sandwich for both of us. Each slice of roast beef is 18 grams of protein and plus the bread. It's another five, so 23 grams of protein. That's 43 today already. <laughs> and for dinner, we're going to eat at the restaurant in the hotel we're staying next to. Not bad vegetarian food here. Yeah. <laughs> what is that thing? That round thing? Arepa. Oh, that looks like a good one to me. Good morning. It's super early, but we're excited to start another mega hike today. This is all potatoes here. And they have these flowers that you're not supposed to eat. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, those. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
If you really want to get away, there's a little habitation here for somebody. Refugio La Cascada with power and everything. Wow, I can't believe how tall these Ralejones get in El Valle. <laughs> We've already ascended in an enormous way, and I'm assuming we're going up there next. Yeah, the last hike we could see like the place that we stayed the whole time. So I kind of like how this hike we can't see any yeah. structures, but I think we have a long way to go. Oh, here's some info about that. It says we got 3,200 more meters. So three kilometers. Yeah, and then from there, even more. <laughs> yeah, this is a far hike, and these hikes are hard because we're going up 3,000 uh, 3, feet. So it's like a lot, a lot of altitude gain. This is no joke. It's far. We're at 4,000 meters. 13,340, so. 13,000 feet. We're gonna do another 14er today, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> and this, is the starting level of the last hike. <laughs> oh, that's good. I so, feel like, yeah, this hike was a little bit easier, easier to breathe and... Yeah, I am starting to feel it with my, my lungs. It's definitely gotta go slow, but uh, it's much easier to breathe than the last hike. The crazy thing about being up this high and sleeping this high is sometimes I wake up feeling like I haven't been breathing, like, like sleep apnea. I don't know if it's just the cumulative effect of less oxygen, and it's a really uncomfortable feeling. You wake up with a start, like, <gasps> Whew. so the guide has assured us that that cliff is not even close to the end. <laughs> but there's a nice waterfall there, having a bit of a healthy snack. I wonder how Sombrita and Graham are doing. <laughs>
close there Well, we made it to Laguna Grande. 7.67 miles. I think we're gonna walk over to the glacier and yeah, check out that bit. It looks like a, a little bit more impressive than the other day. More ice, less snow. I don't think I would really like to ski down this one. The other one looked really fluffy and nice to ski down. <laughs> this one looks more icy. I love that there's this lake right here. Yeah. It is a huge lake. Yeah, it's called Big Lake. Laguna <laughs> Grande. <laughs> Using my photo metadata app, we could <laughs> tell from the GPS metadata the bottom was 11,700 feet. And here we're at 14,800, so that means we've gone up 3,000 feet. Wow. I think we're pretty much at the level where we'll end up over there. Maybe another 100 feet or so. We bagged another 14er, huh? Oh, dang. Almost 15er. <laughs> Ooh, let me tell you, this hike sucks. Ah! Let me do it for you. You'll be glad I did. <laughs> I think it's mainly the oxygen up here, or lack of, and reminds me of the homies we met in Bocas del Toro who took us to that pirate ship party. They were free divers. He said the main thing to staying underwater longer is to clear your mind. And when I relax here, try to just clear my mind, it does feel easier to breathe. Yeah, I agree. When I stop thinking about how far we're walking or how hard it is, uh, that's when I just get really far. Yeah, you get in the zone and your body has more oxygen to work with. Emily, let's make camp here and try for the summit tomorrow. Nothing stands in our way but a measly 0.4 kilometers and a wall of clouds. Almost there, I think. I thought the glacier was right over here. Honestly, it's kind of nice having a guide. So the whole way up here, we've had these little posts saying a number on them. So there's 49 posts. And I remember when there was like, we were at like 10 and he's, he said there's 49 and I was like, what? <laughs> Why? And now we're at 42, so we have seven left. Hopefully, oops, these posts go by quick. Nobody up here but me, my wife, and our Sherpa. Oh yeah, there's number 49. We did it. This is not an easy hike. Whoa. Look at this glacier right in your face. What a view. Oh, Emily found the recliner. <laughs> Got my lazy boy. <laughs> That is insane. Wow. What do you think? Just... Woo! That is a crusty looking glacier. This reminds me of an Alaskan glacier here. Yeah. At only six degrees latitude. Glaciar con cabo. That was quite the hike. Oh my gosh. I guess now we're only halfway, but at least the other half of it should be pretty 
easy and downhill. <laughs> yeah, we're getting just a little light sprinkle, no biggie. We, we've been prepared from the start with waterproof gear, so. Yeah. <laughs> but, this uh, is uh, really incredible up here. Hardest hike you've ever done in your life? Yeah, between the two of them, I think they were both pretty hard. Yeah, I yeah. think if I had to rank them, the other top couple would be Acatenango and Guatemala, which has another spectacular payoff of yeah. exploding volcano. But this one's definitely harder than that. And then there was Santa Marta we did in Guatemala, Guatemala. also. Yeah. That was rough. That was hard. Woo! But, but I think this beats them. I think it beats them both. Just because of the altitude alone. Wow, that's a good point. Right now we're up at, uh, do you know where we're at? 15,300 feet. 15,300, woo! So, wow. lower than we were the other day though. That's why it's raining, not snowing right now. It's pretty wild up here though, because you got some ice caves under there. Yeah. You got this huge concave glacier here. Yeah, and, and our guide says that the glacier used to go down to about where the lake is. So it hasn't yeah. receded as far as the other one, but the panorama there with the lake mm -hmm. and probably about three glaciers around. It's just insane. I can't believe we found this place. I can't believe that so many people do this hike. This is like I know. really rough. I know. I think mostly because of the, the climatization to the altitude. Well, I mean, it's a far hike too. My watch says that we've already gone 8.7 miles. Holy! It's a far hike. Those ain't jump numbers. No, no, this is a very far hike. And it's not to be taken lightly. Yeah. It's not like a hike that you come into Colombia for a week and you do this hike one of the days. Yeah. You have to climatize. At least if you come from Bogota, that's already at 8,000 and a half feet. Mm -hmm. Just amazing to see a glacier this far south. Yeah. When uh, we went to Alaska and saw those glaciers, I kept telling people it's going to be such a feeling of accomplishment to get to the glaciers in Argentina and South America. <laughs> I didn't know there were already some in Colombia. This is incredible. I think for me, the uh, difficulty of the altitude, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm breathing so deep. I don't know why. And then you stop for a second and you feel better. And if you continue to keep doing the thing that you're doing, I start to get like this little ping of a headache in the back of my head. If you don't slow down, that'll stay there the rest of the day. It could go very wrong, you know? There's a guy that actually passed away up here. And if you gotta turn back, it was probably already a beautiful hike anyway. So apparently there's a cave in there. Appalachian sunrise. 
meets my skin Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in Golden, I'll follow only golden Golden, golden things Oh, there it is the van if you're gonna come do this trail it is awfully nice to have your home right at the trailhead trout and hummingbird wing. Golden, I'll follow. oh we made it to the van yeah i think you got the key love clearly not tired at all i think this is some of the wettest most exhausted i've been but i'd say it's worth it Cold Feels good to be all clean again. We're gonna head down to a small town in the mountains before we go back even further down to the more populated part. Um, right now we're just drying out all of our stuff from yesterday. <laughs> it was a crazy hike and every everything that we wore got almost completely soaked. So we're trying to get everything dry. I think the sun is super strong so we'll probably be able to do it today. This road is pretty spicy. A lot of loose rocks, and we just got uh, stopped there where the van wasn't able to make it up. But uh, we asked some random guy, and he said it was a good road. It turned out to be a bit of an adventurous drive. 10 kilometers more. Looks like the real switchback part is up ahead, and hopefully that part's paved. There's a nice bridge down there. But yeah, getting in and out of this area is it's pretty wild. Woohoo, paved road! Like the rains have caught up to us. So we're here in Guacamayas. This little town has a lot of artesanias. People make these bowls out of fiber. So these bowls are what the town is are famous for. They're called guacamay guacamaya bowls. Hopefully we can find some. We're gonna take some brita on a nice walk. There's tons and tons of murals, so we're gonna be able to explore and see some beautiful art. So we did find the coaster guacamayas and some bowls but I just don't know what we would use it for but they were only five thousand that's like a dollar fifty they're really nice we just have to think about what we bring into the van maybe we'll find another little art piece that we'll bring thank you so much for joining us in El Cucuy National Park we're so close to 4,000 subscribers and we want to let you guys know that we're super appreciative of all the support so we'll see you guys next time.